Here at Crosswinds, we're on a journey to discover who God created us to be. And I'm so glad you're joining us today. But before we get started, let's just once again ask the Lord for his blessing. God, we couldn't do anything without you. I mean, all in reality, we could live a painful, unproductive life. But with you, we can do all things. And I pray that today you would let us get it once again, begin to learn, give us ears to hear and eyes to see what you want to tell us and you want to show us. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, amen. If I haven't met you yet, I'm Pastor Pete. And today we're talking the power of just getting it. That is our sermon series for the whole month. And today we want to particularly talk about, I don't know how it works. Most of the time when we talk about getting it, we, we talk about adding something to ourself or trying to understand and we finally get it. We finally get the check. We finally get the job. We finally get the connection we've been looking for. But today about getting it, we need to get that we don't need to do what we think we need to do. See, I often ask myself, why don't more people believe? And then why don't more believers believe? And that sounds kind of crazy. Those of us who are in Christ, and if, if you're watching this and you've accepted Jesus, there's a name that we call ourselves. We call ourselves believers. But yet for those of us who call ourselves believers, many times we just don't believe. Why? I don't know. Because at times we hear the word of truth and we walk away after what? After that time, wondering if God really wants to bless us, if God really wants to intervene, if, if this is really the voice of God or the word of God. Sometimes we hear a story, we see a picture, and we say, oh, amen, or that's amazing, and then question if the Lord really wants to do that with us. And you know, you know what I'm talking about. We're on maybe a social me media page and somebody's posting about something great that the Lord did for them or something great that they did in their life or they've traveled here, they did this, they got the open door, the miracle came and we're so glad and we push the like button or we give them the thumbs up or we comment and say, boy, that's so great. And then when nobody can see, we're taking to ourselves. We're imagining in our mind, you know, that was good for them. Nothing like this has ever happened to me. God, do you not care or, Maybe I'm not important enough or I'm not good enough. But Jesus tells us that the kingdom of heaven is within us. And we find that in Luke 17, 21. But in fact, all the rights of living in the miraculous, all the rights of living in the blessed, all the rights of living in the gospel prosperity, all the rights of living as a child of the living God in Christ belongs to all who call upon his name. Well, let's get into the word of God before we go any farther. And this is in Mark chapter four, verse 24 through 31. And Jesus is talking and he says, consider carefully what you hear. And the Lord is talking about what we hear with our spirit. And so even we have ears to hear what you're, you're hearing, what I'm saying, and we hear conversations, we hear road noise or whatever you want to say. But the Lord, when he says, consider what you hear, he's saying, what are you hearing with your spirit? And so with that in mind, consider carefully what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you and even more. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And he also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. And night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows. And though he does not know it and does not know how, all by itself the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head then the full kernel of the head. And as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. And again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of seeds on the earth. Well, that's enough for today. And so let's just begin to ask ourselves the important question is why do we ask how? and when and why are we always trying to figure it out and when we can't figure it out or we just feel like our faith is weak we just toss it aside and before we go any farther i i just want to say that we're all like this i'm like this when when i begin to pray my mind is kind of or when i begin to pray for a specific thing my mind just kind of starts to click into this mode where 
well, I think that God will do it like this, or this is how it could possibly happen. And, and then we begin to think, well, you know, is it going to happen today or tomorrow? Or, and, and we go through this, this thing that we never get the answers about. We don't get the answers of how and when. And we just try to figure it out. And then when we try to figure it out in our own mind, it doesn't work that way. And then our faith begins to get weak. And then we believe those thought processes that I already talked about, that God doesn't care, God doesn't know, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm in sin, man, I haven't lived a good life, or whatever we put into our own crazy head, and we toss aside the miracle. We toss aside the voice of God. We toss aside what God is trying to really bring into our lives in the first place. So two weeks ago, we talked about kingdom actions, what we need to do in the kingdom. And that is those of us who are in Christ, the kingdom of heaven is within us. So what do we need to do? We need to sow seed. You know, sow, sow seed of the word of God, sow seed of good things, sow seed of positive aspirations, sow seed of, of, of our actions in the flesh, and then create good soil so that the seed can begin to germinate it will begin to germinate and grow and receive water and then we bring additives of good books and positive people around us and god gives the increase there's a scripture in the first chapter of ephesians where the apostle paul is talking to the ephesians and he's saying i'm praying for you every day and i'm praying that three things happen one that you have the ears of the spirit to hear what god wants to tell you Two, that you can believe that God really cares and really does want to help you and that you have this thing that wells up inside of you that you begin to think above yourself and outside of yourself and beyond what your mind is trying to control. See, God is the one that gives the increase. And when you try to figure out how he's going to do it, it's an exercise in futility. And you try to figure out when he's going to do it, it's an exercise in futility. Well, that's the first thing. Second, I want to say there's no limit to what God can do and will do through kingdom participants. So see, we are participants. If you've given your heart to Christ, you've got to participate in the kingdom. You can't sit on the sidelines by yourself. You can't just hope that somebody comes knocking on your door. You've got to participate in the kingdom. See, miracles come in many shapes and sizes. And while we're on the side over there trying to figure it out, God is producing increase. So let's back up. One, there is no limit. The only limit is ourself. And I know it's a tough thing because we are bound by our human actions. We're bound by our bodies and, our, and, and we're, we're in this flesh and inside is our spirit. And the spirit is just trying to get out, is trying to explore our mind and trying to get into every process and every part of our being but we're sitting there trying to limit the spirit with fleshly thoughts. Stop. Did you hear what I just said? We're trying to limit the spirit with fleshly thoughts. And those two things don't compute. When the word says, and, and, and through uh, the apostles, and when they said that eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor mind can conceive it, all those things are opposite of what my eye can see, what my mind can conceive, what my ears are hearing. But the things of the Lord are so much higher than our ways, so much deeper than our ways. And so when the miracles of God come into our life, and they are in many shapes and sizes, like I just said, small, large, miracles inside, miracles on the outside, miracles in our mind, miracles in our heart, miracles in our body, Miracles with people that we're close to. Miracles in our family. They come in different shapes and sizes. And we're trying to figure out how it's going to come. But God is continuing to work. First thing we need to do is rest. And begin to breathe in the things of the Lord. And believe that God does want to work. See, I know this. That God speaks. And the number three here is that God speaks to us in our experience and our maturity in our experience, in our maturity. Something that we tell people every day, uh, every week, excuse me, and so you're probably, if, if you watch this on a weekly basis, you hear me say this, and if you uh, are watching on Sunday when we have live services that we are uh, broadcasting out to you, I say the same thing. And even when we're in the service, people coming in, 
anybody, I say the same thing, and this is what I say. If you gave your heart to the Lord, come back to the house of God again. And that way you can be grounded and surrounded by good, positive people. That's part of the experience and growing in the Lord. And for those of you that are uh, watchers of this or listeners of these, of these podcasts that we're doing here, it, it, you only gain experience by doing it more and more and more, listening every day. And if you're an online person, I challenge you to do, first of all, read our daily devotion. You get it online, and if you ha- aren't getting it online, go to our Facebook page and become someone who likes it, like the page itself, and it'll become part of your daily devotion. So we do that five days a week. Also, we need to, you need to come every week and listen what, whatever day it is, but you, it, you make it a habit because that's when you gain experience and maturity. That's when you hear things that challenge you. See, there is no mystery that God will make not excuse me, there is no mystery that God will not make plain to you if you're praying for spiritual eyes and ears. God is not a God who tries to hide. He doesn't play hide and go seek. He doesn't say, crawl on your knees for 100 yards, then maybe you'll see a spot of me. No, God is open and honest and revealing, and he wants to be in every aspect of our lives, in the good and the bad, in the happy and the sad, in the positive and those things that we struggle with negative. God wants to be there. He wants to dwell in every part of us. He is our friend. He is our savior. He sticks closer to us than a brother. He's better than a spouse, better than a child, better than any person on this earth. That's who our Lord is. And what happens is when we try to figure out how he does things, we begin to fade away from the reality that he can do things. So what is your measuring principle with God? See, if you're hungry, he will fill your spiritual hunger for whatever you desire. If you're hungry, he will fill your spiritual hunger for whatever you desire. My birthday is on June 21st. And what I have done for the last, I don't know, I'm going to say a good five, between five and ten years, is I have eight grandkids. And a few years ago, I didn't have eight, but uh, my youngest one is three, and the oldest is 16. And we have a casino here with a great uh, restaurant, and it's called a buffet. For those of us in Nevada, we know about buffets. It's the Atlantis Casino in downtown Reno, and we like their buffet. And every year for those between five and 10 years um, since you know, the kids come over or we get together for my birthday and I bring them to the Atlantis buffet, the grandkids, and I pay for it. Now, I know this, that I never get my money's worth from a buffet anymore because I'm never that hungry to eat as much as it costs you. But those kids will go back and forth and eat and eat and eat and a few years ago, one of the second oldest grandchild, Olivia, said, Papa, I just love this. this. is my favorite restaurant. She says, I can't believe this restaurant. And I said, why can't you believe it? She said, because everything you go get is free. You don't have to pay for anything. It was the funniest thing ever. I never told her the truth. But I mean, she knows it now that she's 14. But I didn't tell her the truth that I had already paid She just had to get up from the seat and go and get whatever she wanted and whatever she desired. Now, they have a great dessert area there. I mean, it's two big rows long of desserts, and those kids will go back for five desserts, and I don't care. It's my birthday, and I don't care what the parents say. Get as many desserts as you want. Now, in that story that I just told you, can I tell you something? you would be filled with the blessing of God to the level of your hunger. Jesus has already paid the price. The buffet has already been sent for your spirit. The Holy Spirit is here. He's the chef. He's the cook. He's in you. He's around you. He's everywhere. But you bring your own hunger for what you desire. See, and belief is proved by action, and action shows true belief. If I desire to be close to the Lord, it will show up and I will stand up and go to the buffet again. If I need that miracle from God, I will continually go to that buffet to where the spirit is hanging out and I will take whatever the Lord wants to get me. 
I will listen to, the, to him with my, the ears of the Holy Spirit, the spirits inside of me. I will look for the answers with the eyes of God. And so today, we're talking about getting it. Here's what I'd like you to get. There's power when you finally decide that you don't know, but that God does. There's power when you finally say, I'm not enough, but God is. There's power when you say, I am weak, but he is strong. Get it today. And what you got to get, you don't have to get everything. You just know that he is able. Well, I challenge you to just take this quick message, plant it in your heart, and let's start getting into the buffet of the Lord. And let's fill our spiritual hunger to overflowing. If you're watching and you die tonight, I ask you this question. Are you ready to go to heaven? Or do you not even know? If you don't even know, there's a good possibility you'll end up in hell. But that's not who Jesus is. Jesus didn't come to send people to hell. He came so that anybody who calls upon him will be in heaven with him for all eternity. I want to give you the opportunity to give your heart to Christ right now. If you'd like to say to me, Pastor Pete, today I feel like Lord wants me to ask him into my heart. Today I want to be sure that I'm going to heaven. Today I want that spiritual hunger that you talked about. Then just blink like this. Just blink. I can't see you. You see yourself. You know yourself. You and the Lord are right there wherever you're at, whether it's your car, your house, or whatever. And so by blinking, you're just kind of activating something, activating a moment of faith. And then I want to lead you into a simple prayer. If you're by yourself, please say it out loud. If you're with somebody and you don't feel comfortable, say it in your mind, but repeat it after me. Here we go. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me for my sins. I believe you died for me. And I believe you rose again. And with your help, from this day forward, I will live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, click on the links in the description below and begin to walk in faith, knowing that God has a plan for you. And hey, if this message has touched you, make sure to share the message on your social media. Let's spread the good news of God and also be sure to support us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Be a part of our family. We're so grateful that you're with us today. One more announcement. My wife and I are putting in our uh, annual legacy class together. It's starting on March 12th at 11 a.m. on Sundays in room six. We're gonna, it's a six classes, and we're going to have a class and then a time off and a class and a time off. So it's going to spread out over por a portion of nine weeks. But it's really important for those of you who want to go to the next level finances. It is only for those who have paid off their uh, credit cards and paid off their automobiles. The only debt you should have would be your uh, rent or your home. And so this is what I sometimes I've called it millionaire maker, how to go forward. And especially in these times, how do we handle our money God's way? And how do we grow that money for the glory of God? So if you'd like to be in this class, contact Amy at Amy at crosswindsnv.org for more info and to sign up. We only can allow 14 people there and I think there's 10 already in the class. So there's four more slots. Please get ahead of, a hold of her as soon as you can. Finally, here are ways to give here. You can give online at crosswindsnv.org. You can text to give 84321. Mobile giving app, Secure Give, in-service giving, and you can even mail it to 2100 El Rancho Drive, Sparks, Nevada, 89431. And I trust God has blessed you, and I want to thank you for being great givers so that we can give greatly. As always, let's declare God's truth over our lives. So if you're out there, say it with me. I am blessed. I have divine favor. I'm not alone. I am a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I put my trust in the Lord. I walk in the promises of God's holy word because God has a miracle for me. And remember, Crosswinds, we are better together God bless you.